a team and there's nothing to worry about. We come here and we're going to conquer and we're going to take some. Is that understood? Yes, sir. That's what we're going to do, sweetheart. We are going to go and get some. Thank you. All right, people, on the ready line. Are you me? Yeah. Are you me? Yeah. yeah. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Hudson! Get on the ready line, Marie. Get down the door. Get on the ready line. Yo. Yeah. Pull it out, goddammit. Get hot. Watch out, boys. Get out, get out, get out. Get out. Oh, well, we have a Hollywood legend sat right next to us at the minute. Uh, he's known to millions of viewers all over the world as uh, Sergeant Apone in Aliens, but he's been in many, many, many films apart from that. Fifth Element, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. This is Al Matthews, the legendary Al Matthews. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, I mean, your, your life has been one hell of a journey, hasn't it? You have done... I ain't over yet. <laughs> it's not finished. <laughs> I know, I know. You're not at the destination yet. <clears throat> but is there anything you haven't done? I would hardly know where to start. Well, um, I don't dance. Well, no. I did. I, I danced in the film Yanks. But I don't, I don't do... I don't do, uh, when I'm in the theater, I don't do musicals. Yeah. Um, too old of that for that. But you do sing? Yeah. yeah. I had two number ones in America. Oh, have you? Yeah. Was, was, Fool's num was Fool number one in America? No, it wasn't. Right back where we started from. Oh. I see Nightingale. That yeah. was number one. I'm, I write music as well. Right. That's pay to rent. Yeah. <laughs> but you had a big hit with Fool as well, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was a top ten hit all over Europe. Right? Well, it was 15 countries. Yeah. Top ten. So where did it all start? I know you were born in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, a few moons ago. No, I was dragged up in Brooklyn. <laughs> <Were you? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody gets born. I was hatched <laughs> in Brooklyn. Uh, but uh, the uh, I started. I've been in this business since I'm four. Yeah. Four years old. So uh, kind of, I'm used to it. Yeah. I'm used to it. And uh, six or seven years I've been doing this. Wow. Gosh. Yeah. And um, this, this, this not, I mean, you've done so many things, but this is not your first time in Spain. You were here in, in the mid-60s as well, weren't you? I was uh, a lecturer at the University of Madrid. I was teaching or lecturing on black music. Okay. See, Franco, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bad mouth on the dead and nothing like yeah. that, but he was a bugger. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, he, he told people, told the Spaniards that it, they must learn to work like the black man. He didn't know the black man was slaves, did he? Oh, <laughs> he <God>. forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but I was teaching uh, uh, the roots of music and, and uh, <clears throat> lecturing on blues and jazz and all that stuff and explaining how, how it came about. And I was there for the riots, the big riots they had right. in Madrid. And they beat the, the children, the children, the, the kids on horseback. Okay, so wh when would that have been about? Around run, run about 65, 66? Oh, uh, 65. 66, I went to Vietnam. Ah, oh, right. Uh, I, I went back uh, to, to, I couldn't, I, when I first came here, I couldn't get on. First of all, I'm, my family Puerto Rican, so I, I didn't speak uh, Castellano, Spanish. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I just found it very difficult. And... In those days, there weren't many black people in Spain. Right, yeah. I was walking, I, I was walking out, came out of the subway once in Madrid, and this woman had never seen a black man before. She looked at me and screamed. Oh, did she? <laughs> and I looked at her and screamed. She ran that way and I ran this way. <laughs> so, uh, were, you, were you told that you, never to kiss a, a woman in the street here in Spain or something? Uh, how did you know about that? I've been researching. <laughs> well, um, I... Uh, let me let me get the story straight. I'm an old man. You guys got to get forgive, <laughs> forgive me. I uh, I this a, a thing called post restante, which is where you receive mail if you don't have a permanent address. Yeah. And it's a general post office, and uh, I got a letter from my mother, and I was so happy. And I had a Spanish girlfriend, and I kissed her on the steps of the general post office, yeah. and it's. Guardia Seville, in those days they wore the black caps, yeah. uh, the flat caps. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he said, come in. And I, 
Well, is he talking to me? Because my girlfriend spoke English. I didn't have to speak Spanish. So uh, I said, what? She said, you better go over there. And he had a machine gun. I thought, oh, man, well, you know. And uh, I was overjoyed about getting a letter. And, that's, and he yeah. said, you don't kiss. You don't kiss a woman in the street. And I said, but it's my girlfriend. He, said, he, he didn't care whether yeah. it was my girlfriend or not. And when we used to go out, uh, just, these are the old days. When we used to go out walking, the whole family was behind us, about 10 feet. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> Grandma, Grandpa, okay. grand, uh, all the grandchildren, like, everybody's like, behind us. Like the Spanish Waltons. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we weren't allowed to um, hold hands either. No, no, no uh, displays of emotion. Yeah. So you got a bit fed up with Spain after that? I got fed up with Spain. I got fed up with, um, I wasn't getting the kind of work that I wanted to do. And, and I, 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 sadly, Beyond, I didn't know. I was living with the Spanish underground. I, 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 I didn't know this. Oh, is this the, your flatmates that you seem to do midnight flicks somewhere? Yeah, or? yes, yes. <laughs> What's the story there? OK, well, <laughs> every night, these guys would disappear with, with the garbage. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going, well, this is a strange time. And I had to take the garbage out. It's about 12 o'clock at night. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. They, I thought one night I'm going to follow these guys. And they went, I followed them, I sneaked around, yeah. and I went up on the roof. Right. And that's where they were. And they wait for the Guardia Seville to come by oh, in yeah. the car, and they throw the garbage oh. down on them. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I've got to go, man. I've got to leave here because I'm going to go to jail. All right, so they really were like the Spanish underground. Oh, yeah, they right. were. They were definitely. Uh, one yeah. of the guys, a, a very famous uh, artist now, okay. Cesar Bobis. Yeah. A uh, very famous painter, he's a painter. Wow. So you took a small break from Spain, went back to the States. Uh, went, I took a break from, from Spain, went back to the States, got involved, joined the United States Marine Corps, and uh, I thought, well, if it's, there's a war going on, and you can't take my passport from me. I've earned it. Yeah. You know, I, I was wounded twice, decorated 13 times, so... Two Purple Hearts? Two Purple Hearts. Yeah. Are you a cop? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to know more about me than I do. <clears throat> That's fantastic. Amazing. Absolutely fantastic. So um, and while you were in the... I mean, you speak seven languages, you were telling me earlier on. So yeah. you, 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 you were in Vietnam. I was in Vietnam, and uh, I tell you, I, I had a diamond ring, which somebody just... I lost it, or someone stole it from me. I don't know. I, I think I lost it. And... Uh, I, I, I had I bought the, it was a blue star sapphire, yeah. uh, and I I, I uh, was on the outpost. Uh, he had four outposts on the hill that I was on, and uh, <clears throat> I I just bought the ring. You know how it is when you yeah. first buy something, you just can't stop looking yeah, at it. Course, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I dropped it, uh, and we were on uh, on pallets. They had pallets in, in the post, so when it rained, it, it, we wouldn't we weren't actually standing in water. Yeah. Um, and I dropped it, and I bent down to pick it up, and the guy, my, my, my um, um, outpost mate, if you want to call him that, yeah. um, got, got it in the head. So dropping the ring was... Uh, Saved your life. Yeah, well, it did. Yeah. Oh, because I was, if I hadn't been down, I would, it would have been me. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it, was, it was an old, well, it was pretty bad, actually. Yeah. It was pretty bad. So you, you did two tour of duties. Um, how, did, did, how did it change? Did you come out of the army a completely different I person? wasn't in the army. I was in the United oh, sorry, States Marine yeah. Corps. Thank you very much. You came out of the Marines <laughs> a completely different person. Or? Um, well, you know, let me tell you something. I, I, before I went in the military, I was never on time. Yeah. And uh, when I, once I joined the Marine Corps, I've never been late. I've been late since 1966. And, and not many people could say that. Yeah. Um, because if you're late in the Marine Corps, you go to jail. Yeah. And, and I, I've, never, I've never been in the glass house. But uh, <clears throat> I, what I got out of that was self-discipline. Right. Because I, I couldn't um, make myself do anything like turning up on time and all that kind of stuff. But once, once you're in the service, you, you get it, you pick it up. And it gave me the discipline to play my guitar. I read somewhere you, 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 would, you would play the guitar for eight hours until your fingers bleed. Yeah, and you wouldn't yeah. do that before? Or? No, I wouldn't, oh, yeah. I wouldn't even dream of it. 
Well, where do you get all this information, man? <laughs> the World Wide Web, the internet is a great thing. Oh. I mean, you're very famous, you know. Well, <laughs> I don't like that word. I'm, uh, I'm well known is, is, is a better, well better thing. Yeah. Um, fame is for those who don't have none. Yeah. You know, the wannabes are, are famous. Yeah. So your movie career is, is spectacular. I mean, how, how, how much influence did Vietnam and your, um, your marine training have on your movie career? Because you played a lot of sergeants, didn't you? Uh, like no, no, I played one. Yeah. Um, I played uh, police, uh, chief detectives and, and, and that kind of thing. Superman 3? Superman 3, no, I, that was a fireman. Oh, okay. Uh, the fire, fire <laughs> See, I'm team. not that good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're doing fine. Um, uh, what, what happened was, uh, once, you, once you get self-discipline, you can do anything. Yeah. And I didn't know I found out something that I had no idea I, that I had, um, what do you call it? Uh, I can look at something and it's in my head. Yeah, uh, photographic memory. Photographic memory, I didn't know I, didn't know I had that. Good, great for scripts. <laughs> I had to. I had to do a play. I was doing a play called uh, Two Trains Running," I think it was, and uh, I had sixty-three pages and two weeks to learn it. Oh wow! Uh, because it was over the Christmas break, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> I just yeah. And I thought, good just went in. grief! <laughs> yeah. Well, it scared me at first yeah. because I can't remember the songs I write. You know, I said, what is this? But uh, you know, it, 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 it was good. The, the military was a good, a good uh, stepping stone, yeah. if you like, um, to learn to learn self-discipline. Um, now I can do anything. I'm not afraid of nothing. I'm not afraid of anybody. I fight anybody. And, well, yeah. when I can walk, uh, <laughs> I yeah. can't walk so well now. Uh, I, I saw an interview uh, somewhere with one of the actors from Aliens that said that there was an accident with the APC whilst you were filming it. And, and your training just totally kicked in. You took over it. All the actors were panicking and you were barking out orders. I took over and... James Cameron as well. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, you know, uh, you, you have to look out for each other. Fellow actors, you got to look out for each other. And, and that includes looking out for the director, even though some days he was a nice guy, other days he wasn't. But, uh, even if they're buffsy. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it goes with the territory. But... Um, uh, what happened, it was two accidents in, in Aliens. Uh, the first one, they, we were in, in, in an APC. I was just sitting there watching the shot, yeah. and all of a sudden, and they were rocking to, to, give, to give the, uh, the feeling that, that we're in space and, and, yeah. and that we're moving and flying, and, and all of a sudden the set came yeah. apart. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, there's about 25 people rocking this thing. Uh, and it, 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 it was just too much. Well, yeah. the, the carpet just went mad. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the thing started falling down. And just I got up, just as I got up, piece fell right where I was sitting, yeah. a, piece, a piece of the lighting. Yeah. And, and uh, so I took charge of that situation. Because yeah. I'm not going to get hurt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't pay me enough to get hurt. And these are great behind the scenes stories. Was there another um, story where the APC crashed into all the cameras or something as well? No, I don't remember that one, but uh, there was a fire. Uh, the APC caught on fire. Oh. And uh, a real fire. It, yeah. was, it wasn't a joke, it was an accident. And uh, when, when um, Hudson, not Hudson, um, Michael Beam, that's his name, Michael Beam was getting inside and the assets from the the creature was supposed to get on him, yeah. But actually, something happened and, and the thing went up in flames. I don't know what happened. I don't uh, know what happened. Uh, so how how did the how did you get that job in Alien? I mean, the, it, it, what was the story behind you? How okay. did that happen? Okay, well, <laughs> I was doing a film with um, Dennis Hopper uh, called The American Way, and uh, they, they, it has another name in the states. I don't know what what they call it, and. Uh, the director, uh, someone asked me to come come over to 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 see them, to see James Cameron, and uh, <clears throat> he said to me, um, Al, would you uh, would you mind growing your hair because I had shaved my hair off yeah. for this film that I was doing, and uh, <clears throat> funny story, I know how to make money. <laughs> uh, the the uh, 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 the film that I was doing. I went in the office to, to meet the director and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Excuse me, I'm, I'm having water here. This is, this is water. <laughs> mm. So I went over, I went to, 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 view, to view the, uh, to, to talk to the director and look at the script. This is the film The American Way. And there's uh, the whole bit about Vietnam in there. And I looked at it, and that's the first time and the last time I've ever, I threw the script at the director. Yeah. I was spiced, uh, what do you call it, feisty. Feisty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, feisty. <laughs> and so I, I threw the script at the director, yeah. and he said, that's the man I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so he said to me, um, would, you, would, you, uh, would you mind uh, shaving your head? I said, I don't know. Um, I have to phone my office. I, I called my office, and I was with international artists then. And uh, I phoned my office and said, they want me to shave my head. How, how much is that? Well, she said, that's a thousand a week more. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, okay. So I said, yes. I went back and said, I'd be happy to shave my head. So uh, uh, I, I shaved my head. But that, that was a very, um, very strange situation because if you alter your features, and yeah. so that you don't recognize it. I didn't know who I was for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I never had a bald head before. <laughs> yeah. And so I went up to see James Cameron for Aliens, and uh, he, uh, <laughs> he said to me, Al, uh, would you mind growing your hair? I said, oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> James, I don't know about that. I said, oh, excuse, let me call my office. <laughs> so, so I, I phoned my office. I said, uh, he wants me to grow hair. She said, I said, uh, she said, yeah, well, what's the matter? I said, well, how much is that worth? She said, oh, that'll be another thousand. <laughs> so I, on that, I made, was making 10,000 a week. I said, oh, so you got all that extra money to end up exactly how you started in the first place. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. Now, let me, this person, Drake, I'm glad you, 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 you brought that up because I, I never liked her anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, when, we, when we're in, what are those cryogenic machines, or is that what they're called, yeah. that, that yeah. we was flying around in? Um, this girl said to me, Drake, said to me, um, no, Drake was a guy. Drake was a guy. Anyway, this woman said to me, Al, you are blocking my light. This is the first time this woman's ever been on a, on a sound oh, yeah. stage before in her life. And I said, what, what are you talking about? She said, you're standing in my light. I said, honey, I could take your light sitting in my dressing room. I don't have to come out here. So I said, sweetheart, if you win, watch what I do. I can make the camera go anywhere I want it to go. And so she said, I don't know who are you. I said, all right, but watch this. So when, when, the, when the, the lids come up, yeah. uh, I get up and immediately put a cigar in my mouth. Yeah. And, and James said, what was that? What was, turn the camera around. And I, I just looked at the girl and went, <laughs> you see what I can do? <laughs> so uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. And the thing about aliens, which I like the best, I made up all my own lines. Oh, did you? Yeah, I don't follow scripts. <laughs> well, I, I, unless it's uh, in the theater, you have to follow the yeah. script. And, uh, uh, in a film, if you don't, don't like what's, being, what's been written, then you say, well, excuse me, uh, that's, not, that's not the line. Yeah. It's, it's, they say, well, right. what would you say? I said, well, I'd say this. That's good. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll use that. Yeah. It's that take. What do, so you were in um, Fifth Element. Did you not play? What did you play in Fifth Element? Were you a colonel in Fifth Element then? Or? Uh, I, I was a general. Oh, you were a general. Oh, excuse me. Oh, don't demote me, man. <laughs> But, uh, mm. it, did you enjoy that film? No. No. I just can't collect the money, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> what happened was, I, see, I must have seen that movie a hundred times, and I still don't know what the fifth element is. No? Or was. No. And someone told me the other day it was love. Oh, right, okay. Uh, and I thought, well, and there's another guy that, that, that I'm not too fond of, Luke Besson. Uh, he spoke fluent English, and he refused to speak to me in English. And every time he wanted to tell me, give me a direction, he'd call his interpreter over, interpreter over to, to, to tell her, tell me. And I said, 
Look, you speak English. What do you? I said, all right, all right. You want to be French about it? Go ahead. <laughs> do your thing, man. Yeah. So uh, um, I, 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 I enjoyed that movie um, because I got paid. Yeah. That was my joy. Yeah. I have no idea what that movie was about. But uh, I mean, you've done loads of things since. Have you? Uh, you did you have your own radio show as well? Not too long ago. I, Gospel I was show. On, yeah, I was on Capitol Radio for 10 years. Uh, now, this is the funny thing. I would do my radio program uh, uh, pre-recorded anyway. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I was doing film, theater, and my radio show all at the same time. Oh, yeah. uh, I was 25, 30,000 a week. Yeah. Mm, it's not bad money. Yeah, mm -hmm. not bad at all. Well, you did got you, two didn't even kids. Have to shave your head for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And and well, Luke. Another strange thing about that man, we had to wear um, blankets over our uniforms, over the the, the uh, outfits, because um, he didn't want anybody to see what what we looked like. I thought, what is this guy? We had we had to go come from the dressing room wrapped in a blanket. So nobody would see what the, I thought, this is, yeah. what is this? You know, I don't understand it. But anyway, yeah. I got paid. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you and music have had a close relationship for a lot of years. I mean, your, your, your gospel show, did it win, uh, it won an award six years running or something? Did it? Five years running. And yeah. I, uh, the, the last year that I won the award, um, <clears throat> best gospel music program in Europe, right. which is, uh, so my show went all over the place. Yeah. And Nelson Mandela used to listen to my show. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I, I met him, and I, I, I was so gobsmacked. But uh, <clears throat> the last, the fifth award I won, I uh, was going up to collect it, and John Paul Jones, I'm sure you know him, um, said, oh, not again. <laughs> uh, and, and so I thought, well, all right. That's it. I'm not coming here no more. <laughs> I, I don't care. You send the award to my mother or somebody. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, um, and I tried to explain to John Paul Jones the reason my show was popular was because I never mentioned God. Right. I never said a thing yeah. about God except if in, in the title of a song. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and if you if you're on you don't preach to people. Leave them alone. Yeah. You know, just play the music. That's uh, yeah. let's let's chat more music and. Uh, I, I met uh, well, I met some really, really Denise Williams, some really beautiful people. Yeah. Uh, it, it, radio, radio is my my second love, or third love. I don't know. I, so I have all these women. There's so many, uh, there's so many facets to your to your life and your career and your your talent. I mean, but music seems to have been a steadfast thing all the way along, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. From right from your, the early days when you were in the Commodores and. No, I wasn't in the Commodores. I was in the Chimes. Oh, I had my first hit record when I was 14. Oh, wow. And I didn't understand the music business, nor did my mother. So we got ripped off. Okay. We, didn't get, we didn't get to... Did you get paid in fridges and washing machines for something in Yugoslavia? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Roberta Flack. Oh, okay. uh, we, were doing, we were doing... I was touring with her uh, in uh, Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. You know, I don't know what it's called. It's Czech, Czech Republic, Czech Republic, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I said to her when I when I first met her, she was in the, in the doing a press interview, and she was giving all this um, black pride stuff, and I said, "What does that got to do with the music? Man, just yeah. get up there and sing." Yeah. And so I went to to the uh, the uh, receptionist, and I asked the receptionist, "Teach me how to say good evening and thank you." And I wiped the stage with her every night because <laughs> yeah. she, I, I thanked them in, 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 in Yugoslavian. Yeah. And uh, they, the audience just loved me. Yeah, and I just, yeah. one guy with a guitar, man. Yeah. Oh, it was fun, great fun. Why she did, got paid in fridges. And fridges and washing machines, <laughs> why? <laughs> Be, because the tech, you, you couldn't take the money out of Czechoslovakia and her, right. her manager hadn't looked into that. And, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I need some water. Yeah. Mm. See, I got paid. Were you doing support for her then? Yeah, right. yeah, I got paid before I left England. 
Yeah. Okay, so my money was already in the bank. I'm just here to have a good time. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> but uh, Belgrade was a, a dreadful city. Dreadful in in that it's uh, it's, <clears throat> it's it's all pastel colors yeah. and oranges and, uh, and and gloomy and it, you 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 feel depressed. Yeah. Now, I must tell you the story. Um, uh, I got to the airport. When I got to the airport, uh, I, when I arrived in Yugoslavia, you have to give the, the your passport to the customs people. And he, the guy looked at my passport, and, and I looked at him, and he looked at my passport, and he signaled. And two guys came over with machine guns. I don't know what, what is me and machine guns. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and it, it said, go with them. I thought, I mean, I just got here. I haven't done nothing. <laughs> I've only been here two Give me minutes. A to cause trouble. <laughs> no, I haven't done nothing. And so, um, long story short, they um, frog marched me outside to, uh, uh, in front of the airport, and there was a limousine waiting for me, outriders, and oh no, they treated me like a king, and oh. I thought I was going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was very frightening yeah, because they didn't yeah. speak English. Yeah. And I didn't speak Czech so, yeah. or, or Yugoslavian or whatever the language was. And so I didn't know where I was going, what, what was happening, and uh, it was nerve wracking. Yeah. So uh, we got to the hotel. Oh, the hotel was uh, out, of, out of Disneyland or something. It, uh, it had marble um, columns all around it. It was a beautiful hotel and a, and a string quartet yeah. of old women. All right, yeah. I thought, oh my God, like, just funk it up, baby. <laughs> Put some funk in it. And, and uh, anyway, I learned how to say good morning, Dobrovecik, and uh, uh, several things uh, which helped me with my act. Yeah. One guy with a guitar against uh, Roberta Flack and her band, that, that's, yeah. that, that takes a lot of cojones. Yeah, of um, can I say that? Yeah, yeah. OK, right. <laughs> Nosotros es en español, todo, todo es, es normal. Yeah, so you're not sitting still then, <laughs> you're not taking it easy. <laughs> no, well, uh, well, funny you should say that. I'm, I'm writing, I've got a children's book I'm writing, I'm writing an autobiography, I'm writing a cookbook, and I'm writing a film. Yeah. So I keep busy. What's your autobiography going to be called? I'm still standing. I'm still standing. <laughs> oh, yeah, because there wasn't there a rumor going around a, a, a few years ago that you'd passed on to the next world. Well, yes. Um, <laughs> in, in fact, um, uh, that's a funny story. I was, I was sitting in, in my, my local, the Cambridge, uh, in Lasagna, and uh, <clears throat> we are in Spain, so I, 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 I trust that the audience knows where Lasagna is, right? Oh, yeah. They'll give her <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And uh, this, this friend of mine walks in, and he looks at me, and he breaks down, and he starts crying. I said, what's the matter with you? He said, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I said, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I said, well, we were just drinking together last night. I said, yes, but a, a guy on television, uh, 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 an, uh, an announcer on television said, you died. Uh, 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 and... It was a where are they now kind of program. Yeah. And so he said I was dead. And then I, uh, I that, that was the start of it. Did this get back to your family in America? Uh, it got back, it got it back to, got all the way to Thailand. Yeah. And uh, an international movie database put it, put it out that I had died of cancer in 1966, oh. 19, 19, 1999, no, sorry, 1993. Yeah. And I told them, you take that off of yeah. there, or I'm going to sue you. I'm an American. I don't mind suing people. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's, the way, it's the way it is. And uh, within two hours, it was gone. Yeah. Uh, but my f a friend of mine was having a party in, in Phuket. Pl Phuket. Thailand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Phuket. And uh, she said, oh, I, we, I must get Al over here for, for my birthday. It was her 50th yeah. birthday party. And uh, so... Uh, a friend of hers said, you, you can't get Al, he's dead. She said, well, nobody. And she nobody started crying. Me. Well, yeah. that's right. <laughs> she started crying and, yeah. and, and going through the whole thing, which ruined the party. Yeah. And when I heard that, that's when I, 
if you look on my website, it says, in spite of the rumors, yeah. <laughs> I'm not dead. Yeah. I wonder how many movies you didn't get to do because they the directors thought you weren't here. You know, ain't that something? And so I'm thinking, <laughs> man, you guys are killing me. I, I, I'll die when I get ready to die, OK? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you don't mind. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, all, out of all the achievements, oh, can I just instant, uh, uh, just mention, where, where are you, or were you not? Were you the first black? Um, Marine ever to get promoted to the rep to the sergeant or something? No, okay. Like. Well, you got it. You, 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 your information is almost correct. Almost. I was the first uh, black Marine to be meritoriously promoted to the rank of sergeant right. on the battlefield. Right. Well, okay. Now, how that came about was <clears throat> this is a lot of people are going to be angry with me, and I don't care. <laughs> okay. uh, the truth so, is the truth. Well, well that's right. <laughs> and it's, it was all the fault of one man, President Johnson's son-in-law, yeah. Rob, who was married to Dickie Bird or Lady Bird, what was her name? Some kind of bird. Yeah. Um, uh, now, just because a Viet, a Viet Cong don't have a wristwatch, don't mean he don't know what time it is, you yeah. see. <laughs> he just look up at the sky and he knows exactly what time it is. Yeah. And so, Captain Rob was sending out uh, decoys, not what, he, what, what am I talking about, decoys, was sending out uh, uh, flanking things. Uh, I, I've been out in the military so long, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, patrols, that's what I was looking for, patrols, uh, at the same time. Now, he, even if a Vietnamese don't have a watch, you know what time it is, yeah. and you say, hmm, oh yeah. Uh, well, I didn't have to watch it. Look over the sky and say, yeah, they'll be along any minute now. Yeah. And so the, the CO said to me, uh, sent, sent a message. My, my, I was with uh, 155 Howitzers. I was supply sergeant yeah. um, or supply NCO, I, I see, non-commissioned non officer in charge. I, <clears throat> I was not um, a sergeant and I was a corporal. And so the old man, uh, the, the guns had been moved 17 miles forward to support uh, uh, an operation that was going on. I think it was Starlight or something, something one of those things. And uh, uh, he said, oh, uh, tell Matthews to, Matty, he used to call me Matty. Yeah. <clears throat> tell Matty to come down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I said, oh, man. I." 17 miles, I, you know, come on, give me a break. Yeah. I, I said, well, here's the supplies that you need. He said, tell Matty, I, I said, to he, I want him down here. So I had to go. And we were moving along this trek, and then the mortars start coming in. They were up in the hills, the, the gooks. Sorry, I'm sorry, Vietnamese people. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 but they were mortaring us. And so the, what, what happens in, in, in that kind of situation, you do not stop. You speed up and get to, yeah. to cover as fast as you can. Yeah. And so the, we played right into their hands. We were on a trail, and uh, <clears throat> on a, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a highway at the M1 or nothing like that. It was yeah. a, 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 a path. Yeah. Uh, you could just about get, get a, a, a Jeep or a six by down there. Yeah. And what they did was very, very clever. I, 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 I'm sorry, Vietnamese people, I love you, but I don't love you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <clears throat> they shot out. We had a Panzer in the front. We had a Panzer in the rear, a tank. You, you don't look military. No, no, but I, 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 <laughs> okay. I'm an army brat, so uh, oh, oh, well. I understand a little bit. OK. What they did was they blew, they blew the, the, the track off the, 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 the pans in the front, blew the track off the pans in the back. So we're, we're stuck on this. We can't go forward. Yeah. We can't go back. You can, there's no room to turn around. So that's when all hell broke loose. And so we were pinned down for 10 hours. Yeah. And um, Captain Rob, if, that wouldn't have happened if had his men been walking. They were riding in the trucks yeah. instead of. If you can set off an ambush if you if you if you if you're out there if you're flanking, okay. They, they, he didn't do that. They, his men were tired. How can a marine be tired? Marines don't get tired. We don't get wet. And we never drizzle. Um, <laughs> so um, ten hours on this road, and uh, 
Captain Rob said, oh, we're going to have to spend the night here. And, and my, my CO was a captain, too, but he outranked him. You know how the military is. Yeah. If he get promoted two days before me, <clears throat> or I get promoted two days before you, I, I, I have right. seniority. Yeah. Okay. So the, the CO said, my CO said, uh, uh, turn to get the vehicles turned around. Now, in the meantime, the, 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 the gooks, uh, sorry, people, uh, Habits, old habits die hard. <laughs> uh, uh, they shot out the tires on, on, on all the trucks. Yeah. So we couldn't move. So anyway, the, the CO said, well, get, get, get them turned around. And I got turned around, rolled down a few bushes, who cares? And uh, got turned around. It took us, oh, six or seven hours to get back. And I'm, I got a, this big fat guy on my shoulder, and his, his, half his leg had been blown off. Oh, I don't want to think about that. But half his leg had been blown off, and I kept telling him, he's all right, I'm carrying him. And there's this, this puke, is what I, what I have to call him. He's running around with a camera. Not Captain Robin, no, another right, yeah. officer. I never liked officers. Um, I, I liked one officer. My, my, my CO was a good guy. Yeah. Um, he, he went out to, to Da Nang once and uh, lost the Jeep. Or oh, the Jeep got stolen. All right. And so he comes back to me and he says, uh, I was, as I said, supply chief. And so he said to me, uh, Matty, we got a problem. I said, what problem do we have, sir? We said, uh, my Jeep's gone. I, I said, so how is that my problem? <laughs> how is that my problem? He said, Maddie, can you, uh, can you uh, get, get me another Jeep? Uh, I said, sir, oh, well, I'm going to need some time off to do that. <laughs> I'm going to need at least, at least three or four days to do uh, that. Or an extra thousand a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, was, that, that was before films. Uh, oh, okay. Well, just to, as, just to wind down, um, yeah, just to touch on it very briefly, you so see you're, you're absolutely settled here in Spain, you, you, you're, you've got your lovely wife here with you, no plans to... Um, no. Move, no. Move on no, from here no, now. no, no, no. Anyway, my pension goes further here yeah. um, <laughs> than it would in England. Um, no, it's, uh, I, I've been here so long, I speak the language, I know everybody, yeah. and just about everybody knows me. I, I can go. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> it, it's warm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it's getting warmer. I have to take the quilt off. Thanks for reminding yeah. me. Um, uh, it's, uh, I, I'm at home. Yeah. This is my home. Anywhere I owe taxes is home. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. Um, it, it, uh, and uh, the, the main thing is speak the language. That's yeah. the main thing. And I can make any, I can have anybody speaking Spanish, fluent Spanish, in one month. Really? One month, guaranteed. The secret of it, I'm let everybody know what the secret of it is. Uh, when you get up in the morning, turn on children's television yeah. and watch, because it's for two and three year olds. Yeah. And they'll be using, they'll be using language uh, that, that you use to a child. Of course. Okay. Yeah. And then when you go to sleep at night, go to sleep with the radio on listening to discussion programs. And when you sleep, your conscious mind isn't working, but your subconscious is. So it's going in your head. You might not know what, what's being said, but let it, just let it go. Pretty soon, going in. fluid, wow. fluid, that's fluid. That's secret. That's, that's it. So just to finish, um, one last question. What, what would you say your greatest uh, moment has been so far? What, what's, your proud, what's your greatest achievement, your, your proudest moment? Getting rid of the third wife. <laughs> that, 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 I'm very proud of that. No, she got rid of me. But uh, um, see, I have problems with Vietnam. Is Yes, I got the discipline. I got all the rest of that stuff. But uh, I have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Right. And so my wife and I sleep in separate bedrooms yeah. um, because I, sometimes I, I have nightmares and, and I, I, uh, I choke yeah. her. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, not very nice. And, uh, yeah. and, and especially if you want to get your leg over. That, that choking people yeah. is not, okay. not a good a idea. Bit of a passion killer. <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> uh, but uh, my, greatest, my greatest achievement is carrying on doing what I do. Yeah. 
uh, making people happy yeah. and making people smile, putting a smile on people's faces. And that's what show business is all about. That's all it's all about. Steve? You put a smile on our face today. I really appreciate your talking to us. Hey, Alan my Matthews. pleasure. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, you know, I suffer from the Vietnam syndrome. If you point a gun at me, I'm going to shove it down your throat. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> sorry, gang. But that's the truth. If you point, so uh, we had things where everyone's instinct is automatically to put their fingers on the trigger. Well, they stopped doing that on the set with me because I don't have it. I really don't have it. It's an instinct. That's the way I was trained. Thank you very much, America. Uh, that's how I was trained. If you put your finger on the trigger, when you're talking or you're waving your weapon around, I'm gonna jam it down your throat. I gotta do that.